Welcome to this course. We're looking at the System Security Certified Practitioners, the SSCP certification by ISC Squared. Here we're looking at the Official Study Guide, second edition, ISB number 9781119542940. I wanted to first point out that these PowerPoint slides are owned and copyrighted by uh, Wiley Text as it is part of this textbook. These videos are just a run through of core concepts throughout this text. Thank you. Lesson two, orienting the SSCP to the private sector's information security needs. So essentially, how do we take the SSCP and how do we actually apply it to private industry? So for in the context of community of practice, we have four major contexts for the SSCP. We have, again, the private sector. We also have government, but we have a little bit more than just government. We have military and the intelligence community outside the norm of government demands, and we also have nonprofit. So it's not just public versus private anymore. We have to have several different groups that have different security needs and requirements, each having their own specific cultures, their own norms, their own stakeholders, their own decision-making styles, among other differences. For the SSCP, the primary focus will be on the private sector. While it's not the only context for the SSCP, but for our course, private sector is going to be the main focus. We have to understand that for the major organizations, information is power. That information uh, is like a bloodline for everything. Decisions are typically made off of data, off of information. Data-driven decision-making allows organizations to make decisions and to support those decisions backed by data. That's the purpose of it. Decisions should be uh, what you know, uh, how you know it, the trustworthiness of that information. All of that goes into play. So part of that also has to deal with how we're going to record and document that uh, decision-making process. It's important to realize that while data drives the process, they don't decide what happens. There are bodies, like C-level uh, executives, management, managers, they're the ones that actually decide what to do, and they should be making the, those decisions off of data. Again, the entire purpose is to show that data drives those decision-making bodies to make the appropriate decision. So how do C-level executives, how do managers, management, how do they actually decide? And that's going to be done through, again, data, information, knowledge, wisdom that is backed by, again, that data. How does business get done? Well, any business is going to be structured fairly similar in terms of they're going to have guidelines, policies, procedures. They're going to have a process that is used in order to do certain things. We're not just talking HR processes or HR policies. We're talking the overall organization will have a structure that allows the business and all the different business departments to operate. And all of that is based off of policies, procedures, and processes. These make up the guidelines that govern the organization. There's going to be a certain level of business logic. And again, that's going to be the flow of functionality through the business. So we have three accountable terms that are very important when we talk security. Due care, due diligence, and due process. 
Oftentimes, do care is defined as a way to implement something the right way in order to perform the appropriate mitigation procedures. Do care is doing the right thing. Whether you're told or not told, we should have a basic level of understanding of what is the right thing. Due diligence is making sure that the right thing was done correctly. And if it wasn't, then do it accordingly. Due diligence a little deeper is essentially understanding that you have to look at the guidelines, policies, procedures, the processes with a more narrowed focus lens. Look at what policies, what structure is out there, what government regulation is out there, and how they may have an impact on your operations. You're expected to understand that base level security is just the beginning and it's not the end all. What is interesting is when we look at care versus diligence, a lot of people like to interchange these terms and they're not. A, a nice way to remember this is due care is essentially what would a reasonable person would do in a given situation. Is it reasonable that X would occur, X being the normal reaction by an everyday person? Due process is one of those unique terms that is typically found in the legal realm, the law realm. Due process in general is the requirement that establishes laws and standards of behavior that must be followed. Normally with due process, it is the context of how the justice system and technology interact. The justice system, since we're talking the private sector, would be the overall manageability of the rules and regulations of the organization from more of the HR perspective. What is, or the cultural perspective, what would be the structure, the culture, the process for, for individuals for a business to conduct a certain level of business? The due process would define those standards. So let's talk about who manages the business. So if we're talking strategic, long-term business requirements, this is gonna be C-level executives, maybe a board of directors. If we're talking near-term or short-term, those are gonna be more tactical. That's gonna be management. Maybe there is a leadership team. That may not be senior level management because they're more focused on long-term. If we're talking operational, that's going to be low-level management like supervisors or team leads. Basically, if we're talking specifics that help the organization in a more uh, meeting of long-term goals, those may actually be between each of these different or, uh, groups within the organization. How do we apply the everyday goal meeting to our short-term goals to our long-term goals. That's kind of the purpose of aligning our goals so that our day-to-day -day operational goals meet our sh short-term, near-term goals that will then meet our long-term goals. Understand that planning alignment happens at every single layer of the organization. Budgets actually happen at all layers as well. So it's not a single layer has all this power. They, all of the different layers have to align in order to have a successfully ran business. So part of what I just described is value. Essentially, the business won't be able to survive if it cannot achieve value. So how can we look at the different processes of an organization to see how that value can be added? So how does it create or add value? 
how does it actually create the value? What does it cost? If we are creating value, does that expose the organization to any type of risk? All of this contributes to the concept of the value chain. Every single step that a business will do, every single day a business operates, should be aligning the goals, and one of the goals is to increase value. Each day that operation occurs, what are the costs of operating? What are the risks of operating? How do we mitigate the cost and risk so that we can increase our value? So what we've been discussing are different ways that the top serves the overall organization. So we've been looking at a top-down pyramid. The organization supports the achievement of goals and the objectives. The servant should be the leadership. So basically the, the servant portion is going to be the inverted pyramid. And that's going to understand that the leadership recognizes that value is created or the work is actually getting done. So the tip of the pyramid is done by the leadership. However, the base of the pyramid is done through the workers. The top down, the organization supports the goals and objectives that is set forth by leadership. One of the interesting things is when we talk private industry, private industry normally has a very structured approach, and that is going to be this pyramid. And that is going to be a normal pyramid where management is at the top, the workers are on the bottom. The workers make up the base of the pyramid. However, the actual power is an inverted pyramid. And that is that the servant leadership. And that is essentially that the power is actually held by the fewest amount of people. And the greatest amount of people, the workers, have the least amount of power. The senior level management has the vision that allows the organization to move towards. Again, that's the alignment. All right, so one of the things that we have not discussed that is actually pre really prevalent in the chapter, but the PowerPoints did not go over, are the concepts like privacy and how we actually look at different organizations and protection. So privacy is the ability of an individual or group to seclude themselves from inform or information about themselves and thereby express themselves more selectively. They can actually have information about themselves withheld, kept private not shared. And that is actually a core principle in cybersecurity is privacy. Another core principle that was brought up in this chapter but not actually as a slide was the, uh, the ability to meet privacy. And we do that through a triad called CIA. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. This is how we actually implement our security features, is through this triad. Confidentiality is essentially protecting sensitive information, keeping private information private, only allowing authorized users to view that private information. And a common way to do this is through forms of encryption. Integrity. And that is a, one of the main components of that triad, and it is designed to protect data from modification unless you're authorized to do so. Oftentimes, we may talk about the integrity of data, and that is ensuring that no data was modified by unauthorized users. Lastly is the availability. And that is making sure that 
any asset that we're securing is still made available. Security is not about making everything 1000% secure. The problem with that type of concept is we have to make sure that assets are secure but still available. For example, I can secure a classroom by locking the building the classroom is in. If no one is allowed into the building, the classroom is definitely secure, but it defeats the purpose of having the classroom. The purpose of the classroom is to allow learners in to have class. So we have to allow the resource to be available to those that need the resource while protecting the availability of that resource, preventing those that aren't authorized from accessing that resource. We will dive deeper in CIA in later sections of this textbook, but this is a nice introduction to this core concept. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out. Thank you.